The following program was produced by an independent community producer. The opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of the ECAT staff or board of directors. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Topic Time with Harrison Young. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to, would you believe, the final Topic Time show with Harrison Young in November of 2023. What a year it has been for the show. Um, it just keeps getting better and better. Uh, 13th anniversary over the summer, and the year just whips right by. And uh, we hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving here at e in Easton. We had my, I did my last show at uh, Area 58 uh, last night, and wish them a happy, uh, hope, hope they had, uh, hope they had a happy Thanksgiving as well. And tonight we have a very interesting show. We have a couple of ladies that uh, have done a lot of things, and we're going to talk to them in a minute. They're, I believe, in Rochester, New York. But before we get to them, we've got to read these underwriters, and then we will commence per usual. So we got Grip It and Rip It uh, in West Bridgewater, uh, sports cards. we got Hanover House of Pizza in Hanover. They make great Sicilian pizza or Greek salads, and they deliver and have wonderful people working there. We have One Good Credit in Brockton. We have Lynch's Towing Auto Cycle and Truck Center in Brockton, one number for towing, one number for projects. My pal Lynch is always looking for new scrap metal wheels, anything to do with transportation. He does it all. We have a new one, the Spirit and I, distinctive gifts and, um, furniture, and furniture in Brockton. Um, we have Furnace Brook Motors in Easton, um, quality pre-owned cars. You can't get a better deal than that right here in town. We have Aspire Health and Nutrition in Rainham. Great to have them back. We have Commonwealth Cleaners and Dry Cleaning and Tailoring in Easton. They're in New one. We have Johnny Macaroni's Restaurants, two in East Bridgewater, one in Halifax. We have Eli's Auto Care in Taunton. We have Giorgio's Roast Beef Pizza and Mora Restaurant in Brockton. They're in New one. We have Diesel Plus Unlimited in Whitman. We have Auto Town Auto Glass and Auto Body in Abington. We have McGee Used Annex Cars. Uh, for a story, go to the library for real wholesale prices. Call Kevin McGee. We have Easton Fitness in the Village Shops in Northeastern. And now in McGee Annex is in Rockland, by the way. We have the Gunrunner LLC, the Second Amendment Freedom Store in Middleborough. We have Doggy Boutique, all beat professional grooming for dogs and cats, run by my great next door neighbor, W. Siddell in Brockton. We have Countertops Express in North Attleboro, experts in the installation and removal of quartz and granite. We have Grant's Rental in Bridgewater. We have the Rug Resort in Northeastern, cleaning today for healthier tomorrow. We have RW Carpet and Flooring in Norton, covering floors for 50 years. And we have Joe's Diner in Taunton. I want to thank all you guys very much. And now I'm, I'm going to introduce Cheryl Ann and Sandra Ramos. And I believe, uh, how you doing, girls? Nice to have you on the show tonight. We're going to talk about uh, something very important, obviously, that affects a lot of people. Um, so, Cheryl, when I talked to you the other day, we talked, we talked about um, that Sandra founded the, the first uh, domestic violence shelter for women back in 1970. Is, is that right? Correct. Okay. And obviously, that's a, that's a very important subject. And, and quite frankly, um, I mean, I was just a kid myself in 1970. I was 11, and I was in elementary school. And, and, I, and I didn't actually know too much about that, that subject. But obviously, as time went on and, you know, the news progressed as we hear all these, you know, these situations as they unravel uh, right before our eyes. And, we know, and, and then we know people. We meet new people that have this, go, this sort of thing going on. So, um, Cheryl, tell me about yourself a little bit, and then we're going to talk to Sandra. How did you, how did, first of all, how did you two become an, a, an item, a team here? How did that happen? Uh, well, you know, I grew up actually in Hackensack, where New Sandra Jersey. started the first domestic violence shelter in her Hackensack, New Jersey home yep. Yep. Um, that she shared with her three children. I actually went to school with her children. Oh, okay. Wow. Wow. Okay. And yeah, so, and I, I went through a period of time where, I, I really needed um, support and um, I didn't trust anyone. So I knew that Sandra would um, help to make the difference um, for me. And I have been volunteering with her, um, with Strength in Our Sisters for many years, um, doing the much needed work of helping women and children who are victims and survivors of domestic violence. Okay. And, and I assume that... The well, all right, how did you branch it? I mean, how did you get it from Hackensack, New Jersey, to all to to being you know you know all over the country? How did that happen? How did you? I mean, how did you spread the word? How did you market it? I know how important it is. I guess that's so. What happened with Sandra is that um, she 
she had a grassroots organization okay. that that her daughter co coined the term "bordification." It got bordified, okay. and so where the board thought, I guess, that they shouldn't do the work that she so importantly did, and um, she could tell you herself. Um, she actually lost her position with them, fought them in court, and um, took it to the hills of New Jersey, up in West Milford and Wanakue and Newfoundland and Upper Passaic County. Okay. Actually, you said Rochester, Sandra's in Ringwood, New Jersey. That's where she lives. So she moved um, to uh, Quons Purple Quonset Hut okay. that she um, had up in Ringwood, and which is her favorite place. And people came and found her. They said, if you help my cousin, you help my friend, you help this person, please help me. And so actually, in my opinion, she got an opportunity to grow and have seven houses, 150 beds in a way that she would never have been able to do in the area that she had first started. Okay. Um, how did you now... How did you fund this this program? I must have, that must have, was that was that from? I grew up with donations? Sandra's children. I grew up in Hackensack, and she was um, a rebel, a pioneer. She fought the system. Okay. And um, and she was a on hands mom when I was in elementary school with their children. I mean, she was in the PTA. She showed up at the school. She brought free to be you and me by Marlo Thomas to the school and donated it to the library. I mean, Oh, that girl. Wow. Really, um, she marched with the black Panthers, the young Lords. I mean, she was just for integration and felt that she could share, you know, it was very racist back then as well. We oh, I know. I remember point that out. So um, the community she lived in, which was called the Fairmount section was not integrated. And so she was willing, she was willing to share her home with anyone in need. Wow. And so she really had to fight the whole town and it was not a secret. So even as a child, I was well aware of her work. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, okay. And since then, how many, I mean, you have branches all over the world now. Well, actually, we have branches in Upper Passaic County. <laughs> Thank oh. you for that high compliment. Um, but she's been doing her work for 50 years. Right. So 53, if it started in 1970, right? You said 1970. Right, 1970. That's 53 years. And she doesn't think she can do enough. I mean, she Sandra hikes every day. Um, she she she's consistently fighting to provide safe housing. You know, many of the women, and including myself, even when I first came, I mean, you, you're scared. I mean, you're going through big changes, post-traumatic stress, things that you just never imagined would happen. And um, to have warm homes that yeah. people could heal in, I mean, I think that's what Sandra has fought for and provided and much needed. Okay. How do you, how do you handle the legal aspect of this? I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, I mean, let's say someone has, a, I mean, did they have, they didn't even have restraining orders back in 1970, I don't think, right? Oh, she did. Yeah. I mean, right, Sandra? Well, I can tell if, if you want, I helped write them. Oh, really? They, okay. The, the big thing, what Cheryl was describing is all accurate and, you know, very true. However, yeah. I was, you know, young woman there in the 50s. And I mean, in the 70s and 50 years later, I'm still fighting a very violent society. Right. And the the batterers, I helped write the restraining orders, but now batterers are learning how to use them to charge the victim as being the perpetrator. And wow. Wow. they're using the children as coins and cool. as ploys. And it's really for money. And it's really very debilitating. And many children suffer. And right now, I'm still fighting the system. We run seven shelters. As Cheryl described, I moved up to Ringwood to a little cabin that, that I had. And people called me from all over. But bottom line, the establishment supports it verbally, but it doesn't support it monetarily. And when you fight, for the rights of the people that come to you, they don't like you. <laughs> and right now we're fighting a lot of battles. And what I would love, I don't know exactly where you are, 
but I need a good Perry Mason lawyer that okay. can help us. Okay, and, and well, we got a guy here named Kevin help. Reddington, but I don't know if he's that kind of lawyer. He's a great lawyer. I mean, are you look. I mean, are you looking for a defense attorney, or are you looking for somebody that that, ha that handles like that, that handles uh, deposition, or that handles like civil cases between, you know, uh, warming spouses and things like that? Is that what you need? I need somebody that can help support the work that we do in advocating for our women and children, and learn how to fight with the system who sets up rules. They say people can only stay. 90 days. What happens after 90 days? Right, it's I know. Clinton deform law, they're not eligible. So what do they do? They go back to the batterer. Wow. The children are subjected many times to incest and abuse and rape. Yeah, and it's yeah. a vicious cycle. We have all these programs we're running with no paid staff. At one point, I had 55 paid staff. But when the, the, the welfare deform came, we chose mission over money. And we take people for whom we don't get a voucher. And it's a constant struggle and a constant battle. And we live, as you probably know, in a very violent society. We do. And I don't think we can make peace by fighting wars and killing children and killing babies. And it's really very, very sad, frustrating. And we're on the brink of destruction of the earth. What we're doing, I don't think we're civilized. That's what really, we, we go to the bathroom in a bowl, some of us, most of us, right. in a white bowl, but are we civilized? We have people in Palestine who have had thousands of their, their families killed. I know. Three-year-olds running around looking for their mothers. Is that civilized? No, it is for, not. For, for land? And, and the, the society, the, 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 the crime rate is up. The suicide rate is up, teen suicide. It's really horrible. And we need support for the shelter. We need, right now we need an apartment building. We need a van. We need people that are willing, good lawyers that really are willing to fight for the people. We're I, here for the people, Dad. Yeah, I think if I can interject, I think really, I mean, what I see that's needed is fighting for change, right? Right. So, um, so are the laws antiquated or systematic programming? Is it antiquated? Can we move forward in another direction and create change? And I think that is pretty much what you need someone to bring to the legal system to assist creating right. change. Right? I agree. It's, you know, it's a shame because there's so many, you know, the, 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 the standard American family is not the same as it used to be. It used to be, no. some, I mean, one out of every three people got divorced. Now three out of four, every four, every four people get, the, every four right. couples break up, and that doesn't help either. It's not setting a good example for the, for the children. Um, but, uh, do, I mean, do you, how, 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 how integrated are you with the police in the, t in the towns where you have your shelters? Because obviously, right now, they, they have to, I mean, obviously, I assume that they get, a, they're the ones that end up having to file the reports and, you know, make out the, the paperwork. Absolutely, that, but you know what? Two of the houses, well, really three of the houses are right next to the municipal police stations. And so they work very closely with Sandra. And as a matter of fact, I mean, did you say your one of them was your student? Yeah, I taught for many years, um, and I still want to teach. I'm looking to be teaching, but I don't want to do teaching computer. I taught at William Patterson University in Ramapo, a college, I don't think it's a university yet, for 40 years. Okay. I taught women's changing roles, dynamics of domestic violence, and social issues. And as Cheryl was saying, some of my students one of them became the police chief in, <laughs> wow. in West Milford. Talk so about well, working closely with the police, you know. You know but, That's good, yeah. You yeah. know, in that personal level, it's good, but the system itself is really mm -hmm. difficult. Flawed, and yeah. money talks. And people that have a lot of money, I see children that are cutters, suicidal, because they were taken away from a protective parent and given to a parent that has a lot of money. And it's really sad, as I said, uh, use the word wrong, ploy to hurt children to keep the person that you want. I don't want to say love, because to me, if love isn't a healthy love, it's not love. So the, we really need people to support, to become aware, and to 
I'm, I'm available for speaking engagements anywhere as long as you, you know, provide transportation. And we need, you know, community support and awareness. And we need groups for teenagers, for young people, but we need to be real. And right now, money is the goal. They're destroying lands. Um, we also have money. a we also have a GoFundMe link that we sent to you that you could share with the audience as okay. well if they if it's upon their hearts to help is that, us. Is that the video? Is that the video you just sent us? Because that's what we're about no, to watch. No, we sent the video. The video is on Sandra and the purple Kwanzaa hut that she lives in in Ringwood, and it's really interesting. As a matter of fact, one of the videos that they did on her got over a million views. So it's wow. it's amazing. It's yeah, man. Right. It's well, but, but the GoFundMe, if you can. Put that up. That would be really good because oh, we absolutely will. We'll make sure of that. That, that uh, But look, yeah. we're, ha we're halfway through the show. We're going to watch that video right now, and then we're going to come back and talk about it. Okay. Okay. Great. All right. So, without further ado, watch the video. We'll be right back. In this little hut in the woods lives a very unique and colorful woman. Sandra Ramos is lovingly known as the Purple Lady. I think it's, it's a really beautiful color. A visit to her home or even just a drive past confirms that. It's regal, it's passionate, it's royal, and it's vibrant, and I like it. There's her purple Volvo, purple lawn decorations with a purple bicycle. Even her fence is purple. So why purple? Well, when my children were little, I bought a pair of purple sweatpants at the Salvation Army. And my children said, don't wear purple, especially if you wear it on Thursday, that means you're gay. But I don't care. I guess I was a rebel. So I started wearing purple. The neighbors mostly look at me sort of like I'm a celebrity. I mean, they're, they're all pretty nice to me. But it's Sandra's activism that really shines and transcends the colorful world she lives in. You see, more than 35 years ago, Sandra founded Strengthen Our Sisters, a shelter and supportive service program. It's for battered women and, and, and children and some single women. I raise funds. I do groups. You know, so a lot of people say I've helped them and, and they've changed and they've gotten stronger. As a spiritual person, she spends hours every day in prayer, venturing off alone into the woods to be connected with nature. On her way. I walk in the woods and I put out energy and say prayers for peace, for health, for, you know, my children, for all the children in the world, for people that have passed on. For, you know, an end to greed, just I put out energy at each spot for the ancestors. I never put out energy for anybody, for anything unless it's right, you know. I love this tree, I love all the trees. People think it's strange to kiss trees, but I think it's, it's strange not to kiss trees. <laughs> when I'm walking in the woods, and a lot of people stop me, and they go, oh, do you live in the purple house? And I go, well, what made you think that? Are you a detective? Like I talk to them sometimes, because I'm very interested in people. You know, I, I like to know about people, what they think and who they are. I find people interesting. Sandra is starting her own mermaid school to help women find their purpose. The mythical mermaid is a symbol of independence. They cherish freedom, and refuse to be caged, and always follow their hearts. When you meet Sandra, you know that embodies her essence perfectly. I feel like I'm not doing enough. And whenever I say that, people go, oh, and they think I'm being modest. But I'm not modest. I'm a big show of. I'm appreciative and, you know, I'm, I'm glad. But I, I mean, I don't feel like I'm doing enough. My purpose, I, I believe, is to make the world a better place. What, tell us what we just watched here. Tell, tell us what we just watched. Oh, the video? Yes. Oh, 
Yeah, it, it's it's on Sandra. I mean, they follow Sandra at, at her purple Quonset hut okay. in the woods um, of Upper Passaic County in the Highlands region of New Jersey. New Jersey. And um, just giving you an idea of who she is as a person. She's, I mean, she's very unique. She's been in countless articles. Uh, we've been on Eyewitness News um, with the plight for the shelter. Um, but uh, she's had some, you know, she likes purple. How can I, I, I can't put it any other way. So she's painted her house purple, okay. her Quonset hutch, her hair purple, her car is purple. Um, so they kind of highlight a lot of that. In it it doesn't video. run if you have a, a good Volvo mechanic. I have an 86 Volvo. <laughs> Wow. Well, that's a, that's that's for a car that's pretty old. But I guess if you if you keep it in good shape, well, so right? am I. Oh, come on! I thought you were about eighty-two. What's that? Eighty-three, eighty-two, eighty-two, eighty-two. 82. 82. She bought the wrong letter. <laughs> okay. Well, you look great. You both do. Okay. Thank um, you. All right. Well, you obviously it's not slowed you down. You keep you're continuing to work at what you know what you believe in, and that and that's huge. Um, when, when it comes to interacting with, how about do you interact with the schools in the towns that you represent too? Because that's important, obviously, with the kids. That sometimes, it, sometimes it might take a social worker at a, at a at a school to talk to a child who's having issues like the ones you that you deal with. And right, right. And I mean, we get calls, and the, the children love my house. They pass the house. They scream, Sandra, and my my one of the women that successfully got a house. She was a battered woman. Her husband was on his way to kill me. Wow. And wow. He, her children yeah. love me. And they when they pierce my house, they scream, Sandra, Sandra. You know, and they say, We want to live here with Sandra. And the woman goes, Oh my gosh, that house is a mess. It's not really a mess, but it has a lot of things. Yeah. In, right. in You'll see that you've seen that in the video. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But in her what? house. Well, wait a minute! You just said you just said that some guy was going to wanted to kill you because you were tra taken in, or is that what you just said? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, what finally happened with that? What, what did you? What, do? Well, with Lena's husband. Oh, he got run over by a uh, in front of a non-alcohol bar by a college student, and I was in Hawaii at the time. Wow. But the rumor was that I had said I'd give one of my students an A for doing it, but it was students. Not that I would ever do that, but okay. it was a student from Montclair State, a different college. Wow. So, but, but he got run out. But also, to talk about the kids, I mean, so, you know, there was a point where they, um, you know, we had larger volume of children at our main house. And the, like the, the town, they, you know, we got a separate bus for them because of, you know, socialization issues with them. So I think the community of um, West Milford has been very, supportive of the shelter okay but so you... i must say although we appreciate you know gloves and christmas presents and turkeys and body washes people don't only eat on thanksgiving and i think we have to remember that thanksgiving was the day that we took the land away from the native american people i haven't forgotten so I think that all those things come into play so we really need you know front line help to pay the mortgages we, we owe close to $100,000 in utilities in the seven houses. We sold one of the houses and none of us are paid. We work day and night. We, we're really dedicated and there's so much to be done. So right. we really need, you know, community action. If somebody would like to buy us or donate an apartment building, then we, we could definitely use that. And I've summoned for keeping the women too long because we don't want to throw them out in the street. Okay, I understand. I don't know if they do this anymore, but that's some that there's a. I don't know if this would help you too, but there's a, a procedure called eminent domain where houses where houses are taken away. I don't suppose you could use that to your advantage, could you? You know what I'm talking about? Mm, I don't well, know about that. Have for humanity, but the work we have. Is I don't know about that in New Jersey, though. Yeah, but that's, that's where I heard it. Ha that's where I heard they were doing it in New Jersey. Oh really? Okay, yes. we'll have to check that out. Check it out, definitely, because that's something. I mean, I th unfortunately, though, what happens with that is, is that a lot of the people that ha that have lived their homes and lived there their whole lives, I'm told, I'm told to leave. They have to vacate. So you have to. So it's sort of a yeah, slippery slope. Yeah. That. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, you know, we're a nonprofit organization, so right. we're not paying taxes. So I don't know if that could run into like further 
that would be fine, but I, we don't want to take people out of their homes. That's right. You don't. Okay, but I'm wondering, are there any, are there any, are there any like what? How, what's the what's the how much do you have? Like, a, is it a buyer's market down there in, in the real in, in real estate or not? I'm just thinking around um, here. You know what? Very it sure expensive. is, but but you know, very high end. We're proximity to New York. I mean, is we're very close to Manhattan. So right. I mean, as far as the real estate is concerned, Sandra has amassed you know several homes that will help us with our mission. If I don't think it's the housing that we. You know, I mean, other than obviously she'd love to have a, an apartment building. Not that I love. We have nowhere to put the women. And people, the rents are off the, you know, war. Chain. Rents are very high. Yeah, yeah. People have to work three and four jobs to pay the rents. Right, the right. The basic rent. So we need an angel. And I have a sign on my door that says, I don't believe in miracles. I depend on them. And we're hoping that through your show, people, somebody will hear it and say, Wow, these people are for real. They're the real deal. Let okay. me help so they can do the work, not have some fancy director that sits in an office and doesn't, you know, really, you know, be there for the people. Doesn't get it. Okay. <laughs> well, guess what? We're down to the final five minutes of the show. You shared a lot. Okay. I, I hope you had fun talking to me. I know. I hope you. And we're gonna and we're gonna make we're gonna you know show, share this show as much as possible. I'm gonna send it to you when you're gonna share it. With, you know, with, with thousands of people near and far, but hopefully, hopefully, obviously, in your neighborhood first. But you want to, you want to branch out. This will help you do that, and so you can reach out to people that have these this going on all over the country and and maybe beyond that all as well. All over the world. All over the world, exactly. Absolutely, we have, and we appreciate this opportunity to speak with you on your platform to share this word. Okay, thank I, you very much. Thank you. And now, here's a couple of things. What I want you to do. Now, is there, do you have anything, any events that you that you that you have you know coming up? Now that we're running into the end of the year, that that you know that, that do you that besides the GoFundMe, that you're gonna be be um, uh, having um, having um, and enacted in the next you know few weeks to try and okay. help your cause. Is there any is there anything okay. coming next up? Next week is find a find a Perry Mason lawyer okay. immediately. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's something. Okay. That's what, that's what your goal is. All right. We understand that. That's all one right. of them. Okay. Now, if you want to give a few shouts out to people that are going to see the show, that's fine. Go ahead. You know, and we'll wrap it up with my music the way we began it. Okay. Well, I always want to give a shout out to my daughter, Chelsea, but okay. <laughs> that's me. That's and fine. Shout out to all the people who support our mission as well. Okay. Okay. Um, so, what is the name of the go? Fund? Well, we're, we're gonna we're gonna put the name of that on the uh, on the graphics, but I want to make sure we get it right. All right. Well, mm -hmm. we're gonna, and so we'll talk about that after we wrap the show up. So, I'm gonna ask: Is is it okay if you two stick around? And my tech guy is gonna take a picture, and I'm gonna tag you in it for Facebook. I'll share a land because okay. we're, we're Facebook friends. And then and then if you want to respond, that would be great. If you want to tag me, say you had a good time, and you th and you think it was a productive show, that would really be good too. Right, Absolutely. Up. Now, this is the GoFundMe. I mean, we sent you the link, but I don't know if you can see it there, but well, it stopped the shutoff notice because we had some shutoff notices come through. Okay. All right. Well, is there, I, now, is, there, is, there that what, yes. is that what it says on there? Stop the shutoff notice? Is that what yes. it's for the mm -hmm. GoFundMe? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Then that's what we'll, that we'll put that on the, on the graphics when we do the show. So okay, good. All right. Good, good, All right. Good, so we're going to hang around and do a, we'll do a picture and then, you know, we're going to still the snap and wrap the show up and then we'll do a picture and, and then we'll, next week we'll edit the show and it'll be awesome. Okay. Okay. Right. Yes. All right, All right folks. Uh, sh November is up. December is rolling in like a, like a lamb and, and lion's clothing. We're wrapping it up. Take care. See you next month. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Topic Time with Harrison Young.